Okay, so uh, this video is going to review the concept of a parent function. So we, we've talked about parent functions before in terms of the linear equation, the lin linear parent function. So here in this image, of course, you see uh, a mama that is pregnant, and we're using this as the parent function. She's going to give birth to a whole bunch of different baby functions, all with her genes, right? all with her same kind of characteristics. And um, so some people actually call parent functions mother functions instead. And uh, what we said before was that parent function, a parent function is the simplest member of a family of functions. So remember, if I have something like linear functions, I can have y equals negative x, y equals 3x minus 7, y equals a half x minus 9. All of those belong to the family of linear functions. Basically, you can write it as y equals mx plus b. If I break it down to its, uh, its simplest form, it's just y equals x. Okay? And what we're going to be able to do is, is do transformations on the parent in order to make all of that, that family that she might give birth to over there. Okay, so here were the quadratic ones, same kind of deal, that if I take all those quadratic, that family, and boil it down to its simplest form, the parent function is y equals x squared. This one, absolute value function, is what this lesson is about. So you can see I've got y equals negative absolute value of x, y equals 3 times absolute value of x minus 7, y equals a half absolute value of x minus 9, all of these boil down to the parent function y equals absolute value of x. Okay, that's the parent function, and what we're going to be doing is transforming this graph in order to come up with all of the baby functions, the whole entire family over there. Okay, so again, just to wrap it up, a family of functions, they all have the same kind of characteristics, the graphs look similar, uh, whenever you go to graph them, and the parent is the simplest member of that set of, of functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by building the absolute value function graph. And this graph is going to look very familiar to you here shortly. Okay, so the absolute value parent function is f of x is equal to absolute value of x, or y equals absolute value of x. So we've done absolute values before, but there was no y in there. There was just the absolute value of x or you know something a little bit more complicated than that. So now we have two variables, we have an x and a y. Okay, so the graph of the absolute pa value parent function is, is very similar to the um, graph of the parent function for a linear function, which is y equals x, which you see graph there. However, absolute value, whenever you evaluate it, it's always got to be it's always got to be positive. Okay, so if I look at this graph, the part that is not positive is everything from 0 to the left, right? This portion of the graph right here is not positive. So we have to do something with it. We have to make it positive. And so to make it positive, what we do is we reflect that part above the x-axis. Okay, I'm going to take that where it's negative, flip it up above the x-axis and now all those y values are going to be positive. That v-shape, have you seen it before? That's what we ended the last video with. That v-shape is the graph of the absolute value parent function. Okay. Over on the right hand side it's just y equals x. And over on the left hand side, right here let me write that down, let me, let me write it down. y equals x. And over here on the left hand side it's y equals negative x. Because if you take a negative of a negative it makes it positive again. Okay, this shape is a shape of uh, something that you want to memorize. You want to be able to graph that parent function very quickly without even giving it much thought. Okay, so let's talk about some different parts of this graph before we conclude this video. Okay, so again, this V shape makes the absolute value parent, uh, parent function. So, um, the point right there, the point at the very bottom, you mark it here, that's the vertex, it's the minimum point. You might be used to seeing a vertex on a parabola, it's the same kind of thing. It's, a, it's like a turning point, but here it's a very sharp corner instead of a parabola being a smooth one. So that's a minimum point for this graph. And the vertex is at zero, zero. That vertex is at zero, zero for the parent function. And this graph is symmetric about the y-axis. 
What that means is if you were to reflect the right side of it across the y-axis, it would be exactly the same. If you, if you reflect the whole entire graph across the y-axis, it wouldn't look any different. So I want you to memorize this shape. The vertex is going to start at 0, 0, and each side, like the right side is just up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. This one has the point 2, 2 on it. It would have 3, 3. It would have 4, 4, 5, 5, whatever. And on the left-hand side, it's up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1. So it would have the point negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 4, 4, and so on. Okay, so that finishes up this part, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take that general shape right there, that parent function shape, and we're going to do some transformations on it. We're going to stretch it, we're going to translate it, and we're going to reflect it.